So what I have is the Drive Down Bonnie Lane. I'm Pat Sloan, and we are on the car, the super cute darling car. And in your pattern, you do have like all the pattern pieces and the little diagram up here, which is going to be important for laying out the car. And in this video, I am going to do some of the steps and then show you how to lay out the car. So it is really easy. You just take it bit by bit, part by part, and it eventually becomes this gorgeous blue sedan or whatever color you're making yours. But if you're making one with Bonnie Lane, it is the blue fabric. So let's get going and make our car. Once you start doing these and cutting them out, you can see that you pretty much know what the shapes are. But if you feel like it, you can write out on the edge rather than here, like I wrote them in the middle. So like I can pretty much tell once this goes on the white fabric, I am going to know, I'm going to cut that center part out, but I'm going to know that that is part of the car window. These are the windows of the car, which will lay over top of the, the blue fabric. But if you've got shapes that maybe you're not really sure, like, eh, what was that one? You know, put the number of it. There's a guide in Barb's pattern, uh, so it's pretty easy to see. So I'm going to show you how I cut out here. I want to get the middle out of this guy, which is uh, part of the car wheel. Uh, it's the white, the white rims. So I take a cut right through the line because I find it easier and I don't pinch the fusible. And then I will cut inside, which I'm creating a basting rim. It's a little tiny rim inside of here. And if you want to see more detail, my Learn to Applique book has all the tips and tricks in it. So at this point, I have this separate, and then this will be fused to this white fabric. So this part I can either resave for something else or just toss it. It's not very big. So the reason why I'm taking this part out is because I want my piece to be nice and soft on the quilt. I, you know, we're doing several layers here, so I don't want all this layer of fusible. So I, that's why I cut out the middle so that they're nice and soft. And here is that rim I just cut. But I also want to tell you the reason why I cut through the line is because whenever you are folding, do you ever have the fusible break away from the paper when you're working with it? It just like falls off and that's so annoying. Uh, so if you are pinching it, like pinching it like this and then trying to clip inside, that's going to cause a release point, a potential, potential release point of this fusible on the back of the paper and that way you have a better chance of it coming apart which you do not want to do especially when you're working with something like this you want everything to stay together so that is why I cut the middles out let's go to the next step I'm going to fuse this last white piece down but I want to show you how long you take to fuse it so first of all I will fuse from the opposite side of the cut so that way, if it's a bigger shape, I can get it to lay you know, flat and close in. If these, this cut doesn't exactly meet, that's okay. So I would just fuse for a few seconds, like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. That's about it. You don't want to put it on here and hold it too long because what you're going to do is over, overcook it. And it's not a roast. You don't have to do that. It's just a few seconds, and then it is fused. Uh, so there you go. So now we're going to cut each of the shapes out. I've got, you know, black and white, I've got some little ones in the yellow, and here's on the charcoal, and then our big glorious uh, car part. Can't wait to get him all together. So I want to show you cutting one of the shapes out and the techniques that I use. So I'm using scissors like this, which are called a shear, and I have those listed down below. And you're now cutting on the line. So this is your final shape if you need to make any changes to how it looks or how you like the uh, cutting, your drawing. If your drawing wasn't as smooth, you can just cut it smooth. So that's uh, totally good. So we're cutting on the line. And let me just stand like this so you can see. So I'm just coming all around. This is like watching paint dry but you will go ahead and cut all of these. I love cutting shapes out. It sort of reminds me of paper dolls when I was a kid of cutting things out. So I have, this is the final wheel for the car. So this is the, here's on the car. So you can see it has two wheels. So there'll be two black shapes. And then I will take this paper and all you have to do is, is 
just fold, make a crease, just make a crease on the paper, make a crease and then just pull it off. And your fusible then will be shiny. See there, I can see it's shiny. You're going to see that shiny part. If for some reason you pulled that paper off and it was like dull, like uh, old tape you found, <laughs> dull and yellow, like old tape you found under the table, then what you did is you cooked it. You didn't uh, get it, you get it just so it's pliable and it's soft. So that's what it's going to feel like. The next part is to lay everything out. And so I have to now go and cut all these in the magic of video when I come, you <laughs> will we'll have it all done just like that. That's, I got this tray to put all the parts on while I visualize it. We're going to put the top of the car, here are the tires. These are kind of just off to the side. Those are all the tire parts. But for the top of the car, you've got the roof, which is, think of it like a convertible. Then you have three window parts and the base. And these just sit right on top. See, they're on top. And then the, the convertible top is also laying right on top. And here we can visualize where all the placements are. The end window is like the back window and it looks a little funky right here. It will resolve itself as we lay it down and we may want to trim this. This is how Barb designed it, but I'm thinking I may want to trim this a little smoother uh, when I do the final layout. So we'll do that in the next part. So we're gonna place this top, whole top section uh, over top of the body of the car. And so you took this off of, you know, follow, you want to follow your diagram, follow your diagram. But we took this off of the tray and everything is going to be fitting between the two seams. So you got the two seams here as your guide point. The front of the car is maybe like a half an inch and the back of the car is about a quarter of an inch. But that's the flexible, so you can shift things around. The lid, the top, or the top of the car, just basically goes just a teeny bit over the body. Um, you know, just, I had it overlap just a tiny little bit and then maneuver the, uh, the convertible top. And then this unit back here, I just set it where I liked it so that basically it's on the outside edge and then, um, it's covering up a good portion of the black. Almost the whole thing is over the black part for the, the back window. So I think the only tricky thing on this whole car is this look back window. It's amazing. How can that be tricky? But it is because it's kind of a funky shape and it's kind of a visual illusion after it's all done. So here is the shape on your pattern and it is now positioned exactly as it will go on the car. So this should help you a ton. Like if I were going to lay it down, it would go like right like this. That is the position. So you can see this long curve. It goes what goes, like I showed you right there along the back side, and it is overlapping almost the entire black part. It's almost right down to here. So that's how you work with this piece, and that's really the only tricky piece. So I fused these all down. This is just overlapping to the body like an eighth of an inch, just a tiny bit. And I let this one roll down a little past. If you don't like that, then you can pull it up some. So it's really your choice. So there is if I want to pull it all the way up to the top. I think I had maybe down just a little too far. So now I will fuse everything and get it in place. Go along here. And once that is done, I can add in the other parts. So here we go. The car is all done and it has bumpers on the front and the light and then the door handle and at the back end is the back bumper and the tail light. So this is the drive down body laid car. You're ready to put the bottom row together and then your whole quilt is done. Thank you so much for being here. This has been fabulous uh, sewing along drive down Bonnie Lane. We will do one more post where you can share your full quilt or at least catch up and catch up on things. And uh, I am so excited to have have you so along with Drive Down Bunny Lane. This has been really fun. I now we'll stitch the car. Uh, in my blog post, you will find a little close up of how I do the really skinny parts. So be able to go over there. The links are down below here from the video. And I will see you later. Well, thank you very much. That was the end of the video for the car part. Be sure you go over to my website and there you can get all the links and get all the details. Uh, 
pick up the book and the scissors and the pattern if you don't have the pattern and see some of the other things. Uh, so this is the end of the drive down Bonnie Lane, getting all the parts together. See you later.